the interview process that we went through was uh, an amazing experience. It was extremely thorough, thoughtful, Thorough Bailey. intelligence process I love Bailey. that uh, I think went about 15 hours, Ted. Uh, there was a couple different sessions to it. Um, he probably wasn't keeping a clock. I, I kind of took a little bit of a time clock uh, after I got through with it. And uh, believe me, it was a very thorough and intense, and it allowed me to be a candidate. I appreciate the thoroughness because that's what helped me uh, be in this position today to be standing in front of you. What? There's also other people that, that I need to thank. Obama! Number one is my soulmate. Uh, of almost 30 years coming uh, this March when we first met, James my Brown. wife, Gerald. Beth. I also want to thank uh, the light of my uh, eye, Bob my daughter, Hagen. April. Both of them have been with me from the beginning. And uh, their unending love is, what, is the reason I'm here today. George Clooney. Uh, there's a lot of people that helped me get where I'm at today. I, I would Soriano. say that would start with my mother and my father. Uh, well, we'll start with their they parents, came from actually. a tough blue-collar background in the Bobo. Appalachian region <laughs> of Kentucky and Tennessee. They showed me through their examples that good backbone toughness can be combined with kindness of spirit and reaching out to the, your fellow uh, person and neighbor and helping each other through the process of life and through trying to attain excellence. I also want to thank the people that have had an influence on me from in terms of scouting and coaching. People Still such space. as Ted mentioned, Mark Hatley, who is no longer with us, Mike was Pitker. instrumental in my thinking. I'll still remember the day that he told me that, Phil, it's all in the tape. Nick if you look hard enough, any time you get on balance as an evaluator, go back to the tape. Thank Jerry you. Angelo, who I have great respect for, who taught me a lot about digging to the, to the ninth degree about character. Rich McKay, who showed me how to put together a plan for the draft and what that entailed what? and the steps that that needed to take place and how you brought coaches into the process and how we did it as a building. Mark. Rich McKay is a very team-oriented guy. And he showed me how to bring all those pieces together to have a him, productive Marie? draft. Thomas Dimitrov, when he came in, showed me a lot about role definition and the importance of defining roles as a leader and as a, an evaluation staff. Uh, uh, what? Scott Pioli, who without question is one of the finest leaders that I've ever been around knowing what's right for the group and doing the right thing for the group and Call being a good teammate. Yeah. What? One of the things that I've He'll taken from Scott. It. I've also been around a lot of good coaches. People like Coach Majors at Tennessee, Philip Fulmer at Tennessee, the coaches that I coached for it's at the small majors. college level. Wow. Dick Lowry, who was my we hit coach that. in college, who's a Hall of Fame small college Off. coach. Chine Figgins. Him too. I take something from each one of those, and I need to give thanks back. And I'm very appreciative of what they've done for me. Storm sink. How about the Bears? Yeah, what are you doing to fix the Bears? Yeah. How about the Bears thing? Very pumped up <laughs> about this opportunity to lead this franchise. This is the premier franchise in the NFL with the premier fan base. No. In a great sports city, the city of Chicago. I have been here before. That and was I a here again. great experience. It was my first experience in scouting. And what I walked away with it is knowing the passion that the people of Chicago, the fans of the Bears, the people in this building have a true passion for winning and working towards championships. Come on, bro. How am I supposed I'm to proud to be right on, back man. in the thick of it, in the quest for championships, and to be a, a person in a leadership position to help the group move forward, to help us move forward in a cohesive team towards championships. 15 hours of this, I would have blown my brains out. Yeah. I'm what excited about being involved with Coach Smith. Compelling and him is our and rich. Coach. I got to experience Coach Smith firsthand the last time I was here. We were together for about five months. Yeah. 
the qualities that I saw in Coach Smith then in the draft room and being around him are the same qualities that I have seen from afar. Leadership, poise, calmness under duress, skills as a coach, demanding of his players, helping others, being a good teammate. I'm excited to be around him and his staff as we build towards championships. There's a step right there. Yep, championships. That's good. Bill I know that. this scouting staff. I like the ninth degree. I have firsthand knowledge. That was great. That's a tough one, that ninth and degree. Not only the time I've been here, but I've been away for quite some time. And I have seen these scouts on the road. i also not only seen them, but I've heard about them. <laughs> Got a little jerk. The unique thing about it is you go through the ranks as a scout, you huh? hear and talk to different people. And in that director's role, the directors talk about the other scouts. Why do other players suck? Everything that I've gotten back over the years from my own eyes and from people involved in the NFL, this is one fine scouting staff. Dick, but what we're going to do moving uh, forward well, with this staff is to continue to add to it, to take the good people that we have, add more good people, so that we can function at a high level in our role in terms of identifying talent, the best talent, the best people, the right fit, the right ones for the right 53, so we can move forward towards our goal of winning championships. That's trouble. It's a very good, I have a very good feel for where this team is at and the sense of timing of my involvement of coming in at this time. This team has a very good core of playmaking players. Larry. Not only have I seen them just like, the, like any fan on TV perform, but I've also done extensive research of this team and the players. And there is a good core of playmaking players on this team. My job moving forward with the coaches, with the coaching staff, with the front office staff, with the people in this building and operations and video and training and marketing is to continue to build this team. How? So that we can be consistent winners and be consistently in the hunt to win championships. Uh-oh. <laughs> this to is do that, working. <laughs> we've got a lot of work to get started, Bob. It will start when this day is done, when I uh, the opportunity to speak to you now and here in the next few hours, we will move forward in our planning process in the short term for pro free agency. We will involve not only our coaches and our pro scouts, but our college uh, staff in that process. Because to me, an evaluator is just that. <laughs> college you. pro you really didn't does know not that. have much difference in terms of how your eyes go to that tape and evaluate talent. You may have been trained in a different area, but moving forward, when you're looking at players, I think they you're drove looking through at the tools that week. they have, the physical skills or talents that they have, and the traits they have, or their character, their work ethic, passion, oh, God, those are the reliability, their accountability, type of people they are to the community. Are they the right fit for the coach? I, it, Phil, come on now. As Phil. we move through free agency, like he's we been will hypnotized. move to the combine yeah. and towards the college draft. Come to me. We will come back and focus on the draft after we develop our free agency plan and are in the mix of uh, executing that plan as that date comes up March 13th. Once we're through that stage, we will focus in on the college draft as we have been. One thing fortunate in my position is I have a very good feel for the composition of this draft and the strengths and weaknesses of it. Who cares? So I feel very comfortable in taking this in a step-by-step, step, systematic way inch by inch. to accomplish the first thing, which is pro-free agency. Uh, and coming together as a group to accomplish that. In the building. As a building. As we work through the college draft. This guy inspired And have the college Navy draft. Seals? And have a successful college draft in that seals. adding players that are right for the Chicago Bears. Finding the right ones to fit into the right 53. You said that already. Yes. We will move forward and expand in our area of operations in terms of personnel. 
Like I said, we have excellent staff. It will be after that time that we will bring more into it. Okay? You're going to hire more scouts. Okay, fine. Better scouts would be good. We'll we will emphasize anyway. balance in meeting our needs, but our goals and our orientation are through building this team and continuing to add good players through the draft. Got a ton of money to spend. Tell we want to raise our own. We want people that have passion for the Bears. Why? That came into our home and were raised and developed in our home. That have a passion not only for the Bears, but for this city and for our fans. If we have needs and balancing it against the college draft, we will fill those needs through free agency, depending on the composition of those free agents. Like everybody and the else does. Where they might fit our needs and what's available in the college draft. Who the hell is he? But our orientation is towards the college player and filling out good players on this roster. That's right, out, Dick. <laughs> bottom line, regardless of where they come from, Give me the bottom line. our goal Please. is to win championships. Thank you. That's what you said. That. I knew that. We will have clear roles in this quest, in our efforts to build championship teams. Like I said, I've learned from a wide variety of people. Mm-hmm. And I am convinced that when you set standards Chico for Marx people and you define their roles in your company, in your business, and, and in this particular cowboy, situation, the huh. Chicago Bears and our difference. football team and our quest to win championships, when you define their roles and set a standard for them, and the standard is to develop expertise in their roles. And when they uh-huh. reach that standard and they show production in that role and they show talent and traits that can continue to help our efforts towards our goals, then they'll have the opportunity to move up. He's not within saying our anything. I don't but think. first, they have to meet the standard. Of? Okay? They will be eva- uh, um, evaluated and be held accountable just as I am evaluated every day and held accountable. I forgot. And that will permeate through our out our organization. Meeting the standard of being an expert in your role is this is the bar that we're setting. Watch out, ladies. <laughs> and it's my job at every level of the football operations oh, department, this personnel, is, coaching, this video. Is not working well. I checked out all the training staff, yeah, equipment staff, out, yeah. player programs. Ted will be available though. To hold everybody to that standard. And George. Mm-hmm. Ringo. Boring. Yeah, really. I mean, come on, Phil. Fire it up. Let's go. Ignite. What I want to do from here is uh, open it up for questions. Can't wait. Holy Toledo. What a way to finish. Yes, please. Oh, God. Okay. First thing we're going to do is we're going to invest ourselves in the process. Invest ourselves in the process to make sure that we have this current class of free agents. That's how we found Jason unrestricted, and Matt, if you The ones that are restricted that become available or attractive. That we've evaluated them properly. That's what we did. Obviously. And to target those individuals and again to them. balance against the draft. You mentioned the guys but I will hire. tell you this, and not to disappoint anybody. Okay. That's totally when it funny. comes time to publicly assess our needs or publicly talk about players that we may target it, we will not do that, okay? Because I feel that's a competitive disadvantage to do so. We will know internally what our needs are. Good. We will know internally the players that we're going to target. We will not give away our competitive advantage to outline who those individuals are or at what particular position they are. I am more I will say this. What is going to be targeted are good football players, producers, dynamic Uh, playmakers Uh, that can help this football team grow, help the players that are here and surrounded with more weapons, more people that can make plays, and to help this football team in its march towards championships. I think he just dropped him. Great cash, homie. (laughs) <laughs> Phil, will you please say something substantive? That we might be less active in terms of signing big numbers of free agents. Okay, I, I won't, uh, Dan, I won't put a uh, limit on it. We're going to do within our plan as we constructed, and again, the most important part of that plan 
is to have, is to correctly evaluate what's available. Okay? There may be needs. We may have needs in one area, but there may not be free agents that will fill those needs in our eyes. Oh, so we will target them in the draft. Come on. Okay? There may be needs that there are more than one player that can fill those needs. We I have no clue. Those players and develop a no. game plan no. to uh, execute the plan to bring in the Chicago Bears if we find in balance there may not be that college player. I can't okay? do it alone. We will have to work those one against the other, and obviously our orientation would be towards the college players if they can fill our needs. That's a good way to kick off the show. Well, do you feel you know the 53 that's here right now, and obviously you've got a handful of players that are up coming out of contract, or is that something that's What a good piece, take? by the way. Oh, great. What, wasn't he supposed to be a great communicator? This is a guy It was a big part of preparing I'm, I'm calling my guys for the get, evaluation uh, process, which a, was very thorough. Talk. Um, I was asked extensive questions about our roster. I have a very good feel for where we're at as a I, I team, that. and that will help greatly as we move forward in this planning process. Uh, hello. No, don't fade him away. No, this He's is not too, fading. No. He's not no. fading. Too good. He's not losing steam. Oh. Wait. How do you adjust to have to deal with things like the salary cap, uh, contract negotiations, things that uh, you know, weren't necessarily involved with, with college scouting? Okay. Nice thing about the Chicago Bears is we have great resources. Uh, Cliff Stein is a great resource. He's in a f- forefront so was uh, in that role in this league. Um, <laughs> Have I been involved in those discussions <laughs> before? Yes. Horse. As I said, Rich McKay oh, no. was a great teacher who was very inclusive to his entire staff in terms of understanding the big picture of putting a draft together, putting together a free agent plan, and moving forward with it. There's a lot uh, of forward. So I have some experience in those areas, but I will be leaning on Cliff. And he's going to, and I know he's a good teammate. I was be here careful. when Cliff came in, mm. and uh, he's very good at his position. and. And Cliff, along with other people in the building, we're going to help one another. We're going to be a cohesive team. Sometimes in a team you have some weakness and you have strengths. And the key is putting those things together to help one another move forward. The general manager, when you inherit the head coach, can be kind of hot for the first year or so. How, how would you address that? And what would, you, what would be your thought process going into next season the standard that Lovey has to meet or will be expected to meet? Okay, so you got two questions there, right? Okay, first one is uh, awkwardness. You know, one thing I learned as a, as a strength and conditioning coach and not to uh, – I know in your mind right away you're going to think strength and conditioning coach, but one thing a strength and conditioning coach has to do is be a head coach for about six months out of the year. So I'm not awkward to being a leader. Um, <laughs> awkward to be a leader. I learned a lot because by rules, NCAA – during those six months, that's generally uh, January, February, March, uh, May, June, July, you are the head coach. And there's a lot of leadership opportunity. With, at the Naval Academy, it was 200 individuals. Okay? And it wasn't any different in Tennessee. I was in a little bit different role, and I was assistant, but I was a head strength coach for basketball. You learn the qualities of leadership, and the important thing is that you're comfortable filling those roles, and I'm very comfortable filling those roles. What was your second question? Wow. <laughs> I would just say forget it. <laughs> I rescind my second question. All right, here's a question about Lovey Smith. The standards okay. on Lovey. I don't look at it in terms of standards. I'm, I look at it in terms of we're all evaluated every day on how we interact with people, how we provide leadership, how we use our talent and resources. I look at it more from that vein. But my whole mindset is I'm here to help this team. I'm a teammate. Yes, I'm in a leadership role, but I'm here to provide support, help, guidance, and talent towards winning championships. And I'm going to do all uh, within every fiber of my body to develop within that role and to sync with Coach Smith and to help bring those championships. What's your philosophy sync with them. on the franchise tag? And if you can't work it out, do you have any problem using that on Matt Forte? Pretty okay. high profile situation that you've uh, inherited. Uh, philosophy of franchise tag is that, A, it is a tool that's been collectively bargained. 
that is fair to the player and fair to the club. Jack that down. Uh, and that's, that's part of the collective bargaining agreement. It is a tool. It doesn't mean we're going to use it. It's just a tool that's out there. So he uh, agrees second it part of your question, I think, was about Matt in general. Um, my good fortune was with Matt is that I do know Matt the player and Matt the person. And Matt the uh, When I was at Atlanta, we evaluated Matt extensively. Uh, I had the opportunity, uh, whether he remembers it or not, I, I do, is sitting down with him because he struck me as a fine person that came from a great family and was a great teammate. That's the Matt I know uh, in terms of <laughs> using franchise tags or where we're at in that process. That's an internal matter. Just as I spoke before, we won't discuss those things. We won't discuss uh, contract status of a player, uh, where he's at on our team in terms of our needs and where his talent is. Those are internal matters that uh, we will not discuss just from a competitive aspect and not showing our opponent our cards. I would say more, you know, a little bit of piece of everybody. If I would have to say that uh, in some ways that I'm similar in terms of being direct and uh, wanting to be a good teammate and providing leadership but bringing others with me, it would be Scott Pioli. Okay? But I've also learned a lot, of, a, a lot of qualities of working with, developing people, Rich McKay, Thomas Dimitrov, Mark Hatley, Jerry, and beyond that. They just fired okay, Jerry. Um, I was in football a long time before I was in scouting in terms of coaching and being a uh, head strength and conditioning coach. Those influences something you really were numerous. Talk about. I've been a, around it, somebody in, in a building you know, in Kansas City, Mike I, Clark. I once was delivered head paper towels door there. to door. I don't think that's excellent good. Excellent coach, excellent that's individual, good, knows how to handle stupid, people. Hot, he was my sweaty, mentor as a strength coach. I learned a great deal. And everything else. So I would say that the influences <laughs> are not limited to just uh, the folks in the NFL. Phil, you started out in coaching. At what point did becoming a general manager become your radar as a possible goal in three years? You know, what's always been under my radar is to do my best, to under do my best radar? in my role. Um, what's under your radar? I don't oh. think that I've ever actively s seek that out. It, sucks. It, uh, it came together. It came together very quickly. Uh, did I want to be involved in a leadership role? I, absolutely. Uh, that's why you get involved in coaching. You want to lead and help others along. Um, but in terms of seeking out a GM's role, in my mind, if you do your job and you try to achieve excellence, people will notice, and, and then good things can happen. But if you spend your focus in the wrong place in terms of the next job or where am I going, not likely to happen. And you may not learn the expertise that you need to excel in that role when you get it. I like the one I'm on, uh, and I'm and I'm and I'm glad that I have the opportunity to add to that, not only from a leadership ax, uh, aspect, but leadership adding thing. staff in the personnel area, working with coaches, uh, working with players and helping us build this great franchise. That's, that's where my focus is, honestly, Dan. So with regard to decision making, do you consider yourself a consensus builder or a singular, single authority? Good, good question, at Mark Potash, I think. Good question. I look at it as a process. Oh. There's going to be a lot of voices that are involved um, at the appropriate time and in the appropriate way. It'll be very professional. It'll be uh, very thoughtful. It'll be... Um, people working together, okay? I treat um, the voices in my head We may have way. disagreements, but the professional comes, professionalism comes in learning how to agree to disagree and move on to the next player. You think the winning we can is find a common ground, and that player fits out. our system, our coaches, our community. Um, it will be segmented. There will be a lot of voices uh, from personnel side of it, um, in our system, our big meetings are in December's, okay? We move forward, the scouts will uh, give us a rank ordering of the players they've been assigned per position. The coaches come into the process postseason, whenever that is. In our case, we hope it's in February. So, so if everybody in the room likes Michael Floyd today and you like somebody else, who, who do you draft? 
we're going to draft the best player for the Chicago Bears. Okay? Do I have a voice in it? Absolutely. But one thing I've learned as I've matured and gained these gray hairs is that <laughs> listening to voices that you've tasked with an expertise is awfully important if you're going to move forward. And if you rely on yourself all the time, that's where you can um, screw the pooch. You're not always your best judge. You know what I mean? Sometimes you need that outside voice to open up your mind to other possibilities. And I'm very open to those discussions. They will reach a point in this process as we work through it where it will be Coach Smith and myself developing the plan at the end. And it will be on players that him and I agree upon in sync that these are the right players for the Bears. And that's where the heaviest influence will come, is at the end of the process, do we have it lined up right? Or is Coach God. Smith and I in agreement and in sync with these players? Do we have a plan for that player? Not only to draft them, is anybody but awake? post-draft. A developmental plan, knowing that player's strengths and weaknesses and knowing where he needs to go, that's where Coach and Smith and I will put in our body of work, is developing the plan for the players we draft and what is the plan post-draft? No wonder this guy puts in so many hours. He has to. Barry Rosner just tweeted, I wonder if Phil Emery was ever a strength and conditioning coach. <laughs> I will say this. I've, I've always looked at that as a team approach. I'm not going to take credit for any player drafted here in Chicago, Kansas City, or Atlanta. Are there ones that I'm proud of that they got up on that that we took that stick, little sticker off the wall and we put it up under our team? Sure I am. Uh, you know, probably one of the most proud I am of is of the 2005 draft in Atlanta. Um, a lot of that work towards the end was uh, Rich McKay and myself. Uh, we had had Tim Ruskell had left. Uh, we were in a little bit of a void in, the, in that direction. <laughs> I'm very leaving. proud that we were able to put together a draft that included Roddy White, who at one time, you know, typical rookie, uh, wide out, struggled, but they came back, has been a multiple pro bowler, one of eight individuals in NFL history to catch 80 passes for 1,000 yards for five consecutive seasons. I'm pretty proud that Roddy is a part of the Atlanta Falcons and has had success. Uh, there were other good players in that, in that draft class, John Babineau, who's been a starter there for a long time. Uh, Michael Boley, who's one of the better uh, cover linebackers in the NFL that plays for the Giants. So there are some that I feel really uh, close to and proud of, as in any of the drafts. But I will say this is a team process. Okay? Mm -hmm. Just as in Kansas City, very <laughs> wow. oriented towards okay. listening to those voices, gathering that information, getting input from everybody, and then developing a plan on drafting those players into your team and what the plan is post the draft. One thing is we've had consistency in coaching staff. I think that's extremely important. I have great respect for what Lovey has done. Uh, the consistency of teaching, of being systematic, is very important. Uh, I would say that the Naval Academy taught me more that, than, in that area than any other coaching assignment uh, because we had players that were under extreme stress in their daily activities, and it was very important that Scheme stayed the same so that they could play fast. And when we had a large turnover of coaches at the Naval Academy in terms of assistance, they didn't play fast, and we all thought, you know, hey, we got slow players. But when we had consistency of scheme and oh, coaches, God. our players played fast and we won games. All right, I th when I watch I think Lovey Smith's stop. defense, those players well, play fast because they know the Ted scheme. and George are going to speak. So consistency no, they're going to be available. Important. After. Did I, can, I, can I come to the podium and talk to me? No, I, I, if I, I were them I, after I, this, I, I, I would not. I think we kind of have to be done. I would be out the side door. Yeah, I, we're, I think we're all dumber about football now. I am. I'm pretty dumb to start I want to get my eyes on players, John. Uh, there's no doubt about that. How I do it, um, schedule-wise, will be different than I've done it in the past. Uh, typically, and uh, I'm probably ashamed to say this because um, my wife would probably cringe if the reality was known. Typically, I was home somewhere between three and seven days of the month, all fall. 
i don't plan on that schedule because there are so many other aspects that i want to focus in that i can help with in the building and i'll be running a staff but i will be on the road typically what i plan to do is to be here up through wednesdays and either travel wednesday nights or thursday mornings see a game on a thursday see a game on a saturday if it's in a location that we play so that i can see f roughly four teams a week in a different way okay all right okay we gotta go through some of this stuff because he, I, I still don't think he said anything he did he did well it's like it's possible i missed something though. i guess we open up the phone lines and have at in it. your heart did he actually say first he said we will pick players that fit the system and then he immediately said we'll pick the best player available i think he aren't did. those mutually exclusive i thought so i'm uh you know i uh you know how i am i'm i'm nothing if not bubbly and ready to accept you to my bosom mm-hmm. and i was ready to accept him but I, I have no idea what he's talking They're about. They're talking about him being this great right. leader, and e everything yeah, is everything, about the building, the building and the process and the, yeah. and the evaluations and yeah. everybody and this guy and you empower that guy. Does this guy sound like a no, like a no BS, no. take it over leader? No, he does not. Doesn't mean he isn't. It just means he doesn't sound that way. Oh. He's, I'm not sure anymore. I, I, I'm not even I, sure. I don't know. I think I've anymore. lost my will to live. I, 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 uh, I, I, I just want to. I got a call later to make. We're going to have a little talk. Yeah, I, We're going to talk about Phil. Do you want to like go get a drink? I, I would really like a, Yeah, I really <laughs> would like one. I do. I need one. I kind of. I need a good stiff belt. I really do. All right. Wish we were out of remote. It's all you. 312-644-6767. Hello, Phil. You've got Boris and Bernstein on the score. Take a listen again because I think... Uh, is, he, is he still Bill's, talking? Bill's still talking. I want to make sure people understand. He put his glasses on. He's got his little croakies and his, and his glasses on. He put them on sort of midstream. Well, we both come from different backgrounds as any two people would be. And <laughs> no, my okay. influences are different. How we grade players ultimately when we get past... Uh, this draft, no. and I think we need to stick with some things fundamentally I, that we're doing what? to have the best draft this time. But as we move I, forward, oh. how our staff is structured, how our scouts scout, just to make sure we, we didn't grade, miss anything. Okay, that's, scale, that's we fine. Yeah, how we use ago. that we'll grading check back scale, in with, uh, how we'll we have you know, a little down. Yeah, let, let's uh, say goodbye to Phil and his processes and his moving forward. How will anything ever get done with all these processes? I, I it's a process. Can, I can understand why it's 15 hours, though. In 15 hours, he would have answered three questions. Okay. Well, uh, the same I, that, standard that's that's applied to, to everybody in the building and working towards championships. We're all going to be evaluated, oh, okay, yeah. on our ability Did say that to meet yeah. that expertise. I think they're just rewinding standard, and okay. Are you an expert answers. in your role? Okay, are you helping okay, advance we'll, we'll, we'll the group's We'll check back in with goal. Phil. We'll still check in. Yeah, we'll check in with Phil. Coach Smith on Yeah, we got you, Phil. Thank you. Hey, Chad here says, with all these plans and processes, I guarantee Phil Emery doesn't submit a pick on time during the draft in the next two years. <laughs> <laughs> Tim in Lincoln Park, you're on the score. Yeah, so he said uh, we're going to uh, get everyone's opinion and then we're going to make an informed decision isn't that exactly why Jerry was fired? Yes. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, so why. why would you even say that? <laughs> I, I, I don't know, Tim. I, it's a great question that we I can't answer. I, I can't Thank answer you for the call. Yes, I don't know. I, I'll have, I can't. I will answer point. it. I will answer it after a series of processes. What What is our buddy Brian Billick, and I call him a buddy very loosely, uh, say about consensus builders? The answer is no. His answer is no. Somebody. Make a damn pick, so I, I, I and take blame for it if it's wrong. Uh, I'm not excited about nope. that challenge. I, I would be lying to you. It's a great challenge, it's, and it's one that I'm very excited about and, and looking forward to working towards every day to get it right. And he was a strength and conditioning coach at Navy, and he trained Navy SEALs. He's a fine quarterback. Oh. I got an opportunity to watch him extensively when he's at Vanderbilt. The guy makes plays. Those are the kind of playmakers that we want here. Playmakers that make plays. Mm -hmm. That's the best kind. He said that three times. Playmakers that make plays. A lot of good football. 
Yeah. What are your thoughts on him and where he's at right now? In terms of what? In Maybe relation as a player, as a player he's, a, he's a player that's still making plays. I know that. Playmaker. Um, I've heard the rumblings about, you know, uh, there's a little age on our roster defensively. It's I kind of look at it. It's not rumbling. Your birth dates. <laughs> it's not a numerical number that we're looking at. It's it whether is. you're making plays and you're being a productive what? player. Oh my God. If it was just a numerical well, Dick number still play. and number and of gray hairs, I, I wouldn't say it. A numerical yeah. number. Okay. okay. You, you know they're not numerical play. numbers, don't you? you yeah, that's true. You have full control of the 53 man roster. Of your roster. I have full control, yes. But again, that's not where my head's at. My head's in working with Coach Smith towards developing consistency oh, and championships. So he has the authority, but his head's not okay, with so the authority. We're going to move to the back of the lobby. Ted throw up. will be available back there. Ted. Uh, we'll also have an opportunity if you need to Thanks shoot any questions. B-roll or some candid right. shots. Okay, well, ladies and gentlemen, your you Chicago Bears. Boys, let's grab some yeah. pictures. <laughs> <laughs> There they go. Here they come. Oh, boy. Wow. Well, I have the authority. It's just that's not where my head's that's at. That's where right my now. head's at. You just did the general manager of the damn Bears. Yeah, but he's got processes. I, you know, you know who's got this exactly right is our guy, uh, mm. Jason George Goff, because he's, he's nothing if not a uh, – because he's a rising star. Um, he, he if, if the guy picks good players, everything's fine. Correct. But – the trouble is but then don't tell I, me that the guy's some great orator who commands nothing but yeah. immediate respect because of his incredible leadership abilities. Yes. That's not the guy Ted Phillips described. Daniel Webster was a great orator, wasn't mm-hmm. he? William Jennings Bryan, mm-hmm. notably. Jelly Bean Bryan was also very, very <laughs> Magic good. Johnson. <laughs> yeah. Magic Johnson. Oh, great well, orator. If you don't mind the order of the words. and I don't mind the order of the words. Fine. Niles, Michigan. It's Scott on the score. Hey, guys, I'm just glad I wasn't driving a car during that. <laughs> but you know what, though? I, I, I have real concern for Emory because he didn't touch my inner meatball because he did not mention once about beating the Packers. Not that we heard. Not, no. As we were listening, we did. he may have, but we did not hear him reach out to the meatball. Too much preparation. So that's good. Too much process. Lots of processes. Lots of conversations. What People. That he comes from different backgrounds because he's from the Tennessee Kentucky backdrop in the Appalachians, where you learn to be courteous, kind, and forgiving, and to cover your buttocks <laughs> carefully. Well, because, as in they metal. say in the mountains, you <laughs> never know. know. I don't know. I <laughs> I I love a wide ranging interview. I'm a guy who loves a wide ranging interview. I I love to dig deep in the inner soul. Mm-hmm. You're like Bob Welch, for example. I, I that just was good. Don't, you don't man, remember any of it. No, but... I don't remember a damn thing. I don't remember what I wrote. I had no quotes left. The notebook was gone. All right, we will grab some calls, but I. But we're we're late. Yeah. We're, we're late, and we're we're sad, and <laughs> we're not sad. We're, we're, we're stunned we're just, a little we're bit. We're stunned. We're not sad. He could he could pick great players. Maybe he can, but that's uh, well. Did... At least the AHL All Star Game is uh, back on. Yeah, that's Comcast. true. We we interrupted the AHL All Star Game on Comcast, and now it is it is back. The boy touching competition will be later. No, that's oh. in juniors. This isn't juniors. Oh. That's a process, though. Yes, that's part of the process. Then they'll begin moving forward in the process of moving forward because they will get players that fit the system if they're the best available for the process of moving forward. It makes my brain hurt. You have I the score. Know. 